So I thought since um, I am co-hosting March Mystery Madness with a bunch of lovely people and I also want to participate in a middle grade March that I would do a video that kind of features both of them. Uh, all of the books that I'm going to recommend are mysteries. I do have three of the prompts I think for middle grade March that I had books for the other ones I didn't <laughs> but and then a few of the prompts for March Mystery Madness and then I know there's some people that you know they don't even really follow the prompts I'm kind of one of those people and so I figured maybe one of these books might uh, be something that somebody might be interested in all of these not all of these books have I read so it's kind of like a recommendation slash suggestion like these are some books that you might enjoy but a lot of them I have and then some of them I may have on my TBR <laughs> the first one is um, a one word title I know that's one of the uh, middle grade March ones and so I have uh, the series called Framed by James Ponty and each one, it's a trilogy, and each one of the books is a one-word title. You have um, Framed, then Vanished, and Trapped, I think. Yes, I had to look to make sure I was right. And this follows a kid, and his name is strange, so I have to look it up here for a second. Okay, it follows a kid named Florian Bates, and... He has come up with this thing that he calls toast, which is the theory of all small things. And he can take this toast uh, thing that he came up with and he can figure out kind of how to make his day go right. Um, you know, if uh, he is at school, where should he sit in the cafeteria? He can look, he can decide, you know, which uh, egg roll is the best or whatever. He can do those kind of things. He uses those to just kind of solve little life problems that he might have. Then he taught it to a new friend that he made, um, Margaret. And one day in the first book, they were, I think it was, they were at an art museum and they used Toast to notice something. And it gets them kind of thrown into this mystery involving the FBI and so they end up uh, helping the FBI solve uh, some crimes and I wished it would have gone farther than just three but I did like the three and it was a lot of fun and it was my first kind of foray into um, James Ponty's books the next one I haven't read but it's on my list and I do have the first book, and that's found by um, Margaret Peterson Haddix. It's the Missing series, and I've only read a few books by this author, but I've enjoyed them. I think I read the, um, what was it called? The Greystone Trilogy. I'll get it. I read that one, and so I've wanted to read more. I found this at the library, so it's a library copy. It was a Mark Twain Award nominee. And so this one, I think all of the books in this series are also one-word titles. And so we have 13-year-old Jonah has always known that he was adopted. He never thought it was uh, any of a big deal. And then he and a new friend, Chip, who's also adopted, began receiving mysterious letters. The first one saying, you are one of the missing. The second one says, beware, they're coming back to get you. And so, I don't need to know any more than that. Sounds interesting. Uh, I don't know how many, let me see how many is in the series. I think there might be f five or six. I don't know. Oh, there are eight. Okay. So there are eight books in this series. <laughs> and so uh, this could potentially be one that's on my TBR for March. I'm not sure yet, but it has the potential to be. And then... For debut novels, uh, you're supposed to uh, pick out your like one of your authors and like read a debut from them, or 
you know, if you know of a debut author, I guess you could just start with him. But I am going to suggest the Fun Jungle series by Stuart Gibbs. I looked him up on Fantastic Fiction and found out that this was his debut series, and it is one of my favorite series. And so the first one is Belly Up. And yes, I feel really bad for this poor hippopotamus and everything. <laughs> but it is a really good series, and it involves um, a zoo type of place called Fun, Fun Jungle. And Teddy Fitzroy, I had to remember what his name was, Teddy, and uh, he lives there with his parents. His parents, uh, one is a photographer for the animals, the other one is more like a vet or something, I think. And they used to be in Africa, and they've come back to work here, and this is like the closest he's going to get to, like, being back in, like, Africa with all the animals and things. And in this first one, Henry the Hippo, who was the park's mascot, ends up dead. And uh, everybody thinks that it was an accident, but Teddy thinks that um, somebody has murdered the hippo. And so he's trying to figure it out. And along with, I think her name is Jessica, I think if I remember right, who is the daughter of the owner of Fun Jungle, um, they end up trying to solve most of the mysteries that are in the series. And... Each one of them features an animal that if isn't already extinct, because there is one that features an extinct animal, so they are uh, animals that could go extinct if people don't stop killing them, and so the authors kind of bring awareness to that kind of thing. A few of them, to me, gets a little bit preachy on that kind of thing, but uh, for the most part, it's like one of my favorite series, and everybody knows I love Stuart Gibbs, so... Of course he had to be on here. <laughs> so there are a lot of mysteries with animals on the cover. Uh, mostly dogs. <laughs> and I do have a selection of cat on the covers for, metal, uh, for March Mystery Madness. But I'm going to again refer to this one. You could double this one up with um, the uh, debut and everything if you would like because each one of these features an animal on the cover. And then I found one and it was called uh, To Catch a Thief by Martha Brock Brockenberg? I'm not sure if I'm saying that one right. But this one just kind of caught my eye because it has this cute dog on the cover and so I'm very interested in that one so I thought I would mention that one. But most of my animal on the covers are going to be in the cat section that I will get to here in a minute. But this one came out uh, last year, and it says, Urchin Beach isn't the sort of place where bad things happen. The little seaside town is too lucky for that. But when one day a thief steals something precious, the town's dragonfly staff, with it, with, which is the source of all of its good fortune and the most important part in the up-and-coming Dragonfly Day Festival, Amelia McGruffin is no detective. She's 11, quiet, and unlike her four younger siblings, she has no special talents. But Amelia loves her town. Her family has lived there forever. Her parents run the Pacific General Store, and she and her best friend, best friends, Bertie Dauphine, are about to start middle school. If Amelia doesn't find the staff, the Dragonfly Day Festival will be canceled. The town needs this festival and the tourists and everything to survive, so she needs to figure out what's going on, and it sounds like it could be a cute middle grade book. So those were some that I had for a couple of the prompts for middle grade March. Uh, the rest of these are for prompts for uh, March Mystery Madness, the first one being Fancy Dressed, and I mentioned a couple whenever I did my um, recommendations and suggestions for Fancy Dressed, but I have a couple of other ones that I wanted to mention, and so the first one is one that I haven't, I haven't read this one, but I have seen it around, and it is one that I would like to read eventually. And it's called the Lizzie and Bill Mysteries, and it says it's a um, it's a mystery set in 18th century London, with all the fun and zest of Hamilton Bridgerton fashion, and inspired by real black British historical figures. 
12 year old Lizzie Sanchos and Ditto Bell are from different worlds. Lizzie lives in Westminster in her dad's tea shop while Bell is an heiress being brought up by an aunt and uncle in the Grand Kenwood house but both share a love of solving mysteries. And so this one can also work for British mysteries as well if you want to double it up. And so I think it sounds like it could be interesting. It is definitely one on my radar. There are only two books, but it's kind of a new series because the uh, second book came out last year. And so, yeah. Let me know if you've heard of this one because I think it sounds really interesting. The second one I have for uh, well-dressed, fancy-dressed people is um, The Improbable Tales of Baskerville Hall by Alice, Allie Standish. This is a first book by the same title. I don't want to say that again because it's a tongue twister to me. <laughs> and it's about a young Arthur Conan Doyle um, who uh, has who went to a secret school for extraordinary gifted children called Baskerville Hall. And while he's there, he gets wrapped up in a mystery and everything. He learns more about himself. He's got a friend called Jimmy Moriarty. And this one I have read, and I thought it was decent. It was okay. Um, it's a little strange. I mean, like, he finds... There's there's this whole thing with, like, a dragon egg or whatever, and it ends up hatching. And so I'm not quite sure where that's going in the story. You can see a picture of the animal. So this one will work for animal on the cover, too, because you can see it up there at the top with... Um, who I'm get, guessing is um, supposed to be the young Arthur Conan Doyle and everything. But yeah, I mean, it was pretty decent and everything. It, I liked it enough that I am curious about the second one that comes out, which I think is called The Sign of Five. <laughs> so, yeah. So I wanted to mention that one because it is one that I have read. And then I have two for British Mysteries that I haven't read and... Now I'm adding more and more things to my TBR, like I need to. So, the two I have is, the first one is Murder Most Unladylike, and that is the title of the series as well. It says, when Daisy Well and Helen Wong set up their very own deadly secret detective agency at Dead Deep Dean School for Girls, they struggle to find a truly exciting mystery to investigate. Unless you count the case of Lavinia's missing tie, which they don't really. But when Hazel discovers the science mistress, Miss Bell, lying dead in the gym, she thinks it must all have been a terrible accident. But when she and Daisy return five minutes later, the body has disappeared. Now the girls know a murder must have taken place. And there's more than one person in Deep Dean with a motive. And I've seen this around, and I think... It has mixed feelings or whatever on how they feel about it, but I've always wanted to try it and everything. So, you know, the, my March list keeps growing with just regular mysteries and middle grade mysteries. And I want to read all of the things and <laughs> I want to read these too. The next one is called The London Eye Mystery and it is a series by the same name by Siobhan Dowd. And it says, um, May 24th, or Monday, May 24th, 11.32 a.m., Ted and Kate watch their cousin, Salim, get on board the London Eye. He turns and waves, and the pod raises from the ground. Monday, the 24th of May, 12.02 p.m., the pod lands, the door opens, people exit in all shapes and sizes, but where is Salim? So, something happened to him between getting on there and it landing, and so, what happened to Celine? So, they're going to have to try to figure that out, and I want to know myself. I'm very curious about this one as well. It's a little bit of an older one, came out in 2007. And, uh, this one, it does mention that it says autism spectrum disorder, so I don't know if that has something to do with Salim and what happened to him but it does say realistic fiction so you know you could be interested in that if you like that kind of thing i'm curious so next up are the books that i have for a cat on the cover um this one i have is um the amelia six 
by Kristen L. Gray. There's a lovely little kitty right, right there. And a little mouse over here. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, so this would work for animal on the cover for the middle grade prompts. And then we have cat on the cover for March Mystery Madness. And this one is about a group of young girls, and I don't remember who her name is. 11-year-old uh, Amelia Ashford Millie to her friends. Okay, yeah, and she was named after Amelia Earhart, and they get a chance to go and stay in the museum that is featuring the goggles that um, Amelia Earhart had worn. And um, this is like kind of going to be like the last chance to see them in this museum before they are moved, I think, to the Smithsonian, where some people aren't quite sure that's where they want them to go, and they disappear. And so what happened to the goggles? And Millie was the last one seen looking at them. So did she take them or did somebody else? And I, I liked it. It was cute. Um, I think uh, anybody would like this one if they... I think they are like a group of STEM girls, maybe, if that's of interest. But yeah, it's just a bunch of... a group of girls. So they're having a slumber party in a museum. So... One that I haven't read, but is on my uh, TBR. Spoilers. <laughs> and uh, this one is called The Swifts, A Dictionary of Scoundrels by Beth Lincoln. And there is a cat kind of slinking down the stairs there. <laughs> and uh, it says, In her family, Shenanigan Swift has always been synonymous with mischief. As Arch Aunt... Schadenfreude, I, I cannot say that, always says she can't help her name. So when a family reunion suddenly turns into a murder mystery, Shenanigan is determined to catch the perpetrator. A celebration of words and individuality, this remarkable debut is both brilliantly contemporary and instantly classic. So, it is a debut, so going back to middle grade March, this one would fit for like a debut novel. And I think it just sounds fun and quirky and, I mean, just judging by the cover, it looks like it could be fun. And so, yeah, I'm really interested in seeing if this one is going to be as fun as it sounds. <laughs> and the next one that could be found on my TBR, maybe, is The Misfits, number one, and it's A Royal Conundrum by Lisa Yee. I have read some books by Lisa Yee that were in, I think, a a young superheroes. Uh, I think it was the girls, like Supergirl and Wonder Woman and things like that. And I really enjoyed those, and I haven't read anything from her since then. And I've seen this one, and it just came out in January, so it's brand new. And it just sounds like it could be a lot of fun. It says, when a notorious thief is out for priceless treasures, gems, cats, general decorum. Who's, who are you going to call? The elite team of crime-fighting underdogs. That's who. The Misfits are on the case in this hilariously illustrated series by Newberry honoree Lisa Yee and Calcott medalist uh, Dan Santat. So that's the illustrator and everything. So it sounds like it'll be cute and fun. And I'm really there for it. And you can see the little cat in between two of the kids there. And so, yeah. Another cat one for the win. So the last one I have for cats is Midnight at the Barclay Hotel by Fleur T. Bradley. This one I have read and it's got a little bit of a ghosty element to it. But it is a mystery. Um, I say this one is always good for if you just want to read a mystery or if you want a middle grade book with a little spook and everything. And so this one is about JJ and he's always wanted to go and visit the Barclay because it's supposed to be a haunted hotel. And he finds out that his mom has an invitation to go to the Barclay. The only thing is she was supposed to come by herself but he talks himself into going with her. And whenever they go they find out that the only reason that she had been um, invited to the hotel is the owner is dead and 
she is a suspect. So there's like, I think five other people that had been invited. They were suspects. And so JJ's like, my mom didn't do this. So she, he's got to figure out, so he has to figure out what in the world is going on. And there are a couple of other kids that are there as well that are going to help him do the sleuthing. And I really like that one. It's cute. And you can see a shadow of a black cat in the background on this one. So there's your cat. And that's all the ones that I have for cat. And the next one I had is for nine on the cover. And it's the last couple that I have. Uh, finding middle grade books and just mysteries in general for me to fit the prompts was kind of hard because I just want to read what I want to read and they don't fit the prompts a lot of times. <laughs> and But I've always wanted to read this series. It's 39 Clues. And the first book is The Maze of Bones by Rick Riordan. And I know each book is by a different author. So I don't know if they're connected somehow or if they all stand alone. But since the uh, series is called 39 Clues, it has a 9 on the cover. And so I figured that would work. And so I wanted to mention it here. It's a pretty long-running uh, series. I think there are quite a few books. So the last book I have is called The World Famous Nine by Ben Gooderson. I've enjoyed his trilogy, the Winter House series. And so I was excited to see that he had a new one that came out this year. This one came out at the end of January. So it's nice, fresh, and new. And I've had it tagged on the Libby and it's on hold right now, and I'm hoping it's going to come in in March so that I can read it. And this one is about Xander, whose grandmother owns the uh, fabled Number 9 Plaza, spectacular 19-story skyscraper. The Nine, it is called, has everything imaginable, including a massive Ferris wheel on its rooftop. It has um, monorail tracks. It has a whole bunch of glass elevators. Just all kinds of things. And then these strange accidents and things start happening. And so Xander and his friend Natasha are going to try to figure out, you know, what's going on. Uh, discover that these clues are going to lead them to magical object. All that kind of stuff sounds really fun. And just reading about it, it reminds me a lot of Chris Gravenstein's um, Mr. Limoncello series. And how his libraries did all kinds of fancy things. And so I think this one has a lot of potential and I'm really excited and I hope it's good. And I hope it comes in on Libby in time so that I can read it. <laughs> so that's everything I have for middle grade mysteries that some of these could fit the prompts of either readathon <laughs> and a couple of them might be able to uh, kind of mash together with both of the prompts for both readathons. But um yeah, it was really hard just trying to just list mysteries that I could find or that I liked that hit the prompts. <laughs> but I wanted this to be mysteries, and so that's what I did. I could probably do a favorite mysteries that don't fit the prompts. <laughs> but yeah, just trying to find some that did fit the prompts was a little hard. And everything. So uh, let me know if you have read any of these books that I have mentioned. Or if you think some of these sound good and you might put them on your TBR. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.